Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Assalamu alaikum dear students Today we are going to start 14th lecture of discrete structures CSC 102 In the previous lecture we have started set theory and we have discussed basic concepts of sets and operations on the sets we have also discussed the memberships of elements and sets inclusions etc and at the end we have discussed some uh, the properties and operations on sets by using Venn diagrams today we continue the, the the concepts of sets and we shall study the properties of sets and properties of empty sets difference properties set identities and we will compare boolean algebra and set theory and at the end uh, we shall discuss uh, one or two puzzles uh, which can be solved by using set theory so uh, in the last lecture we have uh, discussed the memberships if we have two sets X and Y which are the subsets of a universal set U then um, we repeat here some uh, memberships of uh, elements uh, to the to their sets so if X belongs to X union Y then X belongs to X small x either x belongs to x or x belongs to y so in union in the last lecture we have also discussed that in union an element may belong to one of the two sets it means this uh, uh, this is basically as compared to the logic it's a disjunction property you can say and an element x which belongs to which belongs to x intersection y for this element it is necessary that x, x belongs to x and x belongs to y so x must belongs to uh, both sets x and y and at number three if x belongs to x minus y then x belongs to x and x must not belong to y Similarly, if x belongs to x, then x doesn't belong to x complement. This sign is basically the sign of complement. Or we can write x c. We have also discussed Cartesian product of two sets x and y. And in this case, an ordered pair x y belongs to x cross y. If and only if x belongs to x and y belongs to y. So a little bit uh, revision of the previous lecture of the when an element belongs to the union intersection difference and complement of the sets so now we discuss some properties of the sets uh, here uh, we discuss a theorem inclusion of intersection the first case is inclusion of intersection for all for all sets a and b a intersection B is subset of A it is obvious because uh, by using we can prove it by using Venn diagram or we can see it by using Venn diagram also but it it is obvious that A intersection B is subset of A and A intersection B is subset of B the second statement is inclusion in union for all sets A B a is subset of A union B and B is subset of A union B so we can easily prove this stuff at number 3 transitive property of subsets for all sets A B and C if A is subset of B B is subset of C then A is subset of C so this is basically the transitive property of sets we can prove all these <coughs> properties but here I shall prove only the first one the A intersection B is subset of A we shall prove only this property the rest of properties 
can be proved similarly and uh, I left the other properties to be to, to, to prove for you as an exercise so to prove <coughs> a intersection B is subset of a what we have to prove so this is uh, uh, we have discussed it in the previous lecture that to prove or to show that a set is a subset of another set we have to prove that every element of first set is also the element of the second set for example if we have two sets uh, u and we have to prove it subset of v then we have to prove that every element of u every element of u belongs to v also so this is what we have to prove uh, if we want to prove u is a subset of v so uh, to prove a intersection b is subset of a we choose an arbitrary element of a intersection b and we prove that that element belongs to a also so this is what we have to prove we suppose here x is an element of an a intersection b x is an arbitrary element x can be any element of a intersection b now if we if we can prove that x belongs also to a then we are done then we have proved that a intersection b is subset of a because x is an arbitrary element x is any element of a intersection b and if we prove that any element of a intersection b belongs to a then it means that all elements of a intersection b belongs to a also so um, then we can say that a intersection b is subset of a so here i have written to say that x is in a intersection b means that x is in a and x is in b when an element belongs to intersection of two sets then it is necessary for that element that uh, uh, it should belong to both sets so this is what uh, we have written here so this allows you to complete the proof by deducing that in particular x belongs to a also so as was to be shown note that this deduction is just a special case of valid argument this just a special case of valid argument as we have discussed in the in the logic that we can conclude that if p and q is true then p is also true q is also true because if one of p and q are fa is false then this whole uh, conjunction will be false so by using this argument also we can deduce that a intersection b is subset of a so thus we conclude that a intersection b is subset of a we can also similarly prove that a intersection b is subset of b so this is the proof of the first statement of the this theorem so we have proved that a intersection b is subset of a, a and a intersection b is subset of b similarly we can prove the the second and third so i left these two for you as an as an exercise the first identity <coughs> of the sets is the commutative law now the commutative law says that if we have two sets a and b then a union b is equal to b union a it means that uh, if we write a first or b second or b first and a second then it doesn't matter uh, we write a first or b first first the, the resulting union of two sets will be same we can interchange the 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 order of sets you can see here in union it will not affect the answer so similarly uh, is the similar is the case for the intersection a intersection b is same as b intersection a so this is called the commutative law of sets as we have studied the commutative law of uh, two proposition p or q is basically logically equivalent to q or p so this is same as 
we have studied in logic. The next identity is the associative law. So, <clears throat> associative law states that if we have three sets A, B, and C, and we take the union A, union B, union C, so we cannot take union of three sets at a time. First, we take the union of two sets, and then we take the union of the resulting set with the another set C. So we have to put brackets here uh, around two any two sets. So A union B. If we take A union B and then union C or A union B union C. So this will be same as this union. So this is basically the associative law for set union. Similarly, there is a associative law for set intersection which states that uh, A intersection B a intersection C or A intersection B intersection C this is this, these are basically two equal sets. Now the third property is the distributive law for sets. If we have three sets A union B intersection C then this law states that this set is equal to A union B A union C and then intersection comes in the middle so this is the distributive law for sets similarly we can take the intersection out and union inside means that this intersection is here and the union is here so this states that a intersection b a intersection c and then you we can write the union in the center so this is basically the distributive law for any three sets the next identity is a identity laws for all sets a a union empty set is A and A intersection universal set is basically U. A sorry, A. So these are basically identity laws. Identity laws means if we take the union of A with the empty set, it will <coughs> A will not be changed. Similarly, if we take the intersection of A with the universal set, we'll have the same set A so there is no change in the original set a therefore these laws are called called identity laws the next is uh, complement laws a union a complement is always the universal set and a intersection uh, a complement is always empty set similarly we have double double complement law if we take the complement of a complement set then we will get the original set a the next are the idempotent laws A union A is equal to A and A intersection A is A also. Universal bound laws A union U is U and A intersection phi is phi. So these are universal bound laws. Now we have to prove all these laws. So I prove only one or two laws and then and the remaining laws you can prove by yourself. So there are some other laws uh, which are given here. De Morgan laws. De Morgan law states that if we take the union A union B whole complement then it will convert as A complement and union will be converted to intersection and B complement. So this is basically the uh, De Morgan law uh, of union you can say and if th there is another De Morgan law in which we have intersection inside the complement. A intersection B complement is equal to A complement union B complement. We can all we can prove all these laws um, but uh, and also we we can prove or we can see the equality here by using Venn diagrams. The next are absorption laws for all sets A and B. 
A union A intersection B and A intersection A union B. It means we have studied these laws also in logic. Uh, in the case of distribution, uh, distributive laws, if we have two same sets in the distributive laws, then we have the this the set which comes two times. Here A comes two times. <clears throat> so here we have distributive law, but we have two sets same in the distributive law as you can see in the distributive law here we have a union b intersection c so we have three different sets a b and c are di three different sets if we write uh, a here instead of b then the answer of this distributive law is straightforward a because we have two same sets in the distributive laws so this is basically given here if in the distributive law any two sets are equivalent then the resulting set will become A. Similarly here we have A intersection A union B then straightforward the, the resulting set will be equal to A. So these are basically absorption laws. The next is complement of U and Phi. We know that the complement of universal set is empty set and the complement of empty set is universal set so there is another identity which is set difference law of if we have two sets a and b then a minus b is equal to a intersection b complement so this we can also prove by by direct method or we have studied uh, method of proofs by any appropriate method and we can also prove it by using Venn diagrams. So now I give you the the proof of some of the identities for example I give you the proof of distributive law for sets especially this set. We shall prove this law which is the distributive law and we have to prove that left hand side is equal to right hand side. As in the previous lecture I have uh, hmm, I have told you one identity that if we want to prove two sets to be equal A is equal to B then how we prove these two sets to be equal we prove that A is subset of B and B is subset of A if we can prove this then we can conclude that a is equal to b so this is what we have we shall also we, we, we shall prove here first we prove that this left hand side is a subset of this as you can see here and then we shall prove that the right hand side is a subset of left hand side so how we prove that one set is subset of another set uh, we have uh, discussed discussed it earlier we take an arbitrary element of the left hand side this any arbitrary element of this set and then we prove that this element belongs also to this set which is the right hand set so we suppose that x belongs to the left hand side this set a union b intersection c then we have to prove that x belongs to also a union b intersection a union c so if x belongs to a union b intersection c then by the definition of union x belongs to a or x belongs to b intersection c so now there are two cases if x belongs to a then what happens and if x belongs to b intersection c then what happens so first case we suppose that x belongs to a since x belongs to a then x belongs to a union b because uh, uh, for x to 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 belong to a union b it is sufficient that x belongs to a by the definition of a union also x belongs to a union c by the definition of union if x belongs to a union b and x belongs to a union c then we can say that x belongs to 
the intersection of both these sets. Therefore, the the left hand side A union B intersection C is subset of this right hand side in the first case. Now we consider the second case. We suppose that X belongs to B intersection C. Now since X belongs to B intersection C, what does it mean by the definition of intersection X belongs to B and X belongs to C? By the definition of intersection. Since x belongs to B and x belongs to C, then x belongs to A union B and x belongs to A union C because x belongs to at least one set in these two sets A and B. And similarly, A and C. So therefore, we can say that x belongs to A union B and intersection A union C because here we have uh, uh, we have said that a un x belongs to a union B and x belongs to a union C. So therefore in both cases we can say that x belongs to a union B intersection a union C. So we have taken an arbitrary element of the left hand side this. Arbitrary it could be I have told you that it could be any element. So any element of a union B intersection C belongs to this set this means that this set is subset of the this set now when this uh, we suppose that this is equation one we have proved on the one side uh, in this here now we are going to prove that the right hand side here this is subset of this this side so how we can how we can prove that this is subset of this we choose an arbitrary element x which belongs to this and then we prove that x belongs to this set so this is sufficient for uh, proving that this set is subset of this set so we choose x belongs to a union b intersection a a union c then by the definition of intersection uh, x belongs to a union b and x belongs to a union c now we have two cases in this case also how consider the two cases x belongs to a and x belongs x doesn't belongs to a why because here if we are succeeded to prove that x belongs to a then we are done how how if x belongs to a and here we have union a union b intersection c if x belongs to a then x belongs to hold this set because there is a union between a and b intersection c so we can say that if x belongs to a this implies this implies x belongs to a union b intersection a union b intersection c so x belongs to this set if x belongs to a so that's why we suppose that uh, we consider the two cases if x belongs to a and if x doesn't belong to a so in the first case we suppose that x belongs to a here if x belongs to a then we can conclude that x belongs to this set and by the definition of union then we can say that a union b is subset of this set in the second case when x doesn't belongs to a and then we have that x belongs to a union b because we have uh, uh, suppose we have suppose here that x belongs to this set then x belongs to a union b though so if x doesn't belongs to a and we know that x belongs to a union b what does it mean it means that x belongs to b if x belongs to b uh, yes and similarly for this case x belongs to a union c since x belongs to a union c and we know that x doesn't belongs to a this means that x belongs to c 
So if x belongs to C, and then and we have also uh, proved here that x belongs to B. Here we have proved that x belongs to C. It means that x belongs to B and x belongs to C. If x belongs to B and x belongs to C, then by definition of intersection, x belongs to B intersection C. Now, if x belongs to B intersection C, then x belongs to A union B intersection C. So, in both cases, we have proved that x belongs to B intersection B union B, uh, A union B intersection C. So, we have chosen an, an, an arbitrary element of this set and we have proved that that element belongs to this set. This means that this set is subset of this set. Now, this is equation 2. In equation 1, we have proved that this set is subset of this set. And in equation 2, we have proved that this is subset of this. Now, we can conclude by the definition uh, that if x belongs to, uh, if a is subset of b and b is subset of a, then we can say that a is equal to b. So, by using this uh, identity or property, you can say the, these, this left hand side is equal to right hand side. So, this is what, this is basically the distributive law for sets and we have proved it we can similarly prove the other the other identities which we have uh, we have discussed here commutative law associative law distributive law identity complement laws and all other laws we can prove similarly so we prove another law here and then we will move forward this law is very important in in set theory so we uh, we discuss the proof of this law here prove that for all sets a and b a union b whole complement is equal to a complement intersection b complement so this is what this is de morgan's law for sets so to prove this set is equal to this set what we do uh, we do the same procedure as uh, we have done in the previous uh, proof we choose an arbitrary element of the left hand side x belongs to a union b whole complement then we prove that this x also belongs to this right hand side so if x belongs to a union b whole complement this means that x doesn't belongs to a union b because x belongs to a union b whole complement this means that x doesn't belong to a union b but to belongs to a union b means that it is false that x is in a or x is in b it means that uh, x doesn't belong to a and or x is not belongs to b so if x doesn't belong to a and x uh, or x belongs to x doesn't belong to b then we can say that x belongs to a complement and x belongs to b complement here we have or here we have and so this is basically as we have studied in logic the morgan's law this implies that uh, the negation of this is what? If x doesn't belong to A union B, what is the negation of this? x belongs to A complement and x belongs to B complement. This is what we have. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we, I have written here that if x doesn't belong to A union B, it means x uh, doesn't belong to A or x doesn't belong to b and the negation of this is basically as we have discussed in uh, logic x belongs to a complement and x belongs to b complement if this is true then x belongs to a complement intersection b complement if this is true then by definition of intersection we can write this so this is what we have to prove so we can say that this side is subset of the right hand side 
now one inclusion has been proved now we are going to prove the converse of this uh, um, case means that we now we are going to prove that this is subset of this set now what we do we if we do the same process we choose an arbitrary x which belongs to this set and here we have intersection by the definition of intersection we can say that x belongs to a complement and x belongs to b complement and by the definition of complement if x belongs to a complement then x doesn't belong to a and x doesn't belong to b by the same argument in other words x is not in a and x is not in b then what does it mean it means that x is not in the a union b because x is not in both a and b then x obviously doesn't belongs to a union b if x doesn't belongs to a union b then x must belongs to a union b complement so this is what we have to we have to prove then we can say that this side is the subset of this side so we are done basically in here we have proved that if we say this equation 1 and this equation 2 then by equation 1 and 2 we can say that a union b whole complement is equal to a complement intersection b complement so this is what this is de morgan's law so we have proved two laws uh, distributive law and de morgan law for the uh, for any two for for the sets the rest of the proofs uh, the rest of the identities you can prove yourself so these are very i hope these are very simple now for you now we move further and and we discuss some properties of the empty sets now by the definition of empty set uh, a set which contains no element basically is called an empty set so if uh, we have a theorem here if e is an empty set with no with no element mm, that is a e is empty set and a is any set then e is subset of a uh, what does um, mean this theorem or what does this theorem says uh, it says that empty set is a subset of every set which is not empty so this is what we are going to prove so uh, we shall prove this theorem by the method of contradiction so here we have to prove that e is subset of a, a is any set. We have to prove this. We suppose that e is not subset of a. Here we, what we have supposed here, we suppose not means e is not subset of a. So we have uh, we we use here method of contradiction and by the by the definition of uh, proofs by contradiction we suppose that the conclusion is false here then we move now we do some steps and we should arrive at some contradiction by 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 the method of contradiction so we move further here suppose there uh, so here we suppose that e is not subset of a then uh, by the definition when a set is not subset of another set when it happens you know it uh, in the previous lecture we have observed <coughs> such type of things if e is not subset of a then there exists at least one element in a e sorry then there exists at least one element in e which doesn't belongs to a so that's why e is not subset of a but here <coughs> suppose there exists a set e with no elements and a set a such that e is um, such that e is not subset of a you can uh, write it here 
then there would be an element uh, of E that is not an element of A this is what I have uh, told you now but we know that there is no element in E by definition by this by the hypothesis here by the hypothesis here this is basically the P of X and this is this is what this is Q of X in the universal conditional statement if P of X then Q of X so we have supposed that the Q of X is false here <coughs> and but hypothesis is always true in the universal conditional statements we suppose them uh, always true then uh, in the hypothesis we have that E is E is a set with no elements but there can be no such element since E has no elements so this is contradiction to the supposition that E has no element so we can say that uh, our supposition was wrong that E is not subset of A then what will be true the Q of X will be true means E is subset of A so we conclude that this theorem is true that every empty set is a subset of a known empty any known empty set so this is what we have proved for all empty sets for all sets the next is the uniqueness of the empty set and there is only one set with on with no elements so we have to prove that uh, there is only one set with no elements so this we again prove by 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 the method of uh, you can say uniqueness we always prove like this uh, if we have to prove anything uh, is unique then we suppose that there are two things mm we suppose that that thing is not unique there exists two such things we suppose it so here we have to prove that there is only one side with no elements so to prove this statement we uh, we follow this procedure we suppose that this is not unique so we suppose that e1 and e2 are both sets with no elements then e is subset of e2 by the previous theorem we have sub previous theorem in previous theorem we have supposed that uh, we have proved that empty set is a subset of any set a so if e1 is the set with no elements then e1 is subset of e2 so this is true since e has e1 has no elements also e2 has no elements then e2 is subset of e1 since e2 has no elements so we have proved that e1 is subset of e2 and e2 is subset of e1 the what what does it mean it means that e1 is equal to e2 so what we have supposed that there are two such sets is false actually they are they both are equal so what does it mean it means that this statement is true there is only one set with no elements so another statement which we have to prove a set with no element is a subset of every set this is what we have proved in uh, in this theorem I think so there is no need to, to prove this or you can see it yourself so next uh, we have to prove this uh, conditional statement this is uh, basically a property of sets prove that for all sets a and b a b and c if a is subset of b and b is subset of c complement then a intersection b is a intersection c is phi so what is the proof of uh, this state this universal condition statement suppose a b and c are any sets such that a is subset of b and b is subset of c complement so this is what we have supposed that this is basically the hypothesis of condition statement this is the conclusion so we suppose that the hypothesis is true so we must show that q of x is true means a intersection c is is phi basically now 
suppose not here we are again using the method of uh, contradiction we suppose that a intersection c is not empty that is suppose there there is an uh, an element x belongs to a intersection c if a intersection c is not empty then there must be some element x which belongs to a intersection c so if x belongs to a intersection c then x belongs to a and x belongs to c if x belongs to a and we also know that a is subset of b and b is subset of c complement so if a belongs to x belongs to a and a is subset of b then x belongs to b also because a is subset of b by the definition of subset also here we have supposed that b is subset of c complement it means that b is subset of c complement because x belongs to b here and x belongs to c and also since this, this b is subset of c complement then x belongs to c complement because because a is subset of b and x belongs to b and here we have supposed that x belongs to b is subset of c complement if uh, x belongs to b then then x belongs to c complement by the definition of subset again so it follows uh, by the definition of complement that here we have shown that we have shown that c belongs to x belongs to c complement then x doesn't belongs to c by the definition of complement so here we have uh, here we have that x belongs to c and here we have that x doesn't belongs to c so uh, x belongs to c and x doesn't belongs to c this is basically a contradiction which is a contradiction because at one place we we say that x belongs to c and at another space at another place we have proved that x belongs to c complement so this is a contradiction there is a confusion you can see so if there is a contradiction then where is the problem the problem is 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 in our supposition what we have supposed actually we have supposed the wrong thing that a intersection c is not phi then if our supposition is wrong then what is what is true this is basically q of x is true this is what the method of contradiction we have already discussed in detail so we have proved this theorem also which is an important property for sets now finding a counter example for identities so if we are we we are unable to prove an uh, a set identity then how can we find a counter example for the for the identities for example we have to prove that this is equal to this and we use direct method we use indirect methods method of contradiction method of contrapositive many other methods and we are unable to prove that this left hand side is equal to right hand side then we what we do we find a counter example whether this identity is actually true for all, all these sets or not so we are going to find a counter example for this identity that this identity is not true so if we suppose that a is a set which contains 1 2 3 uh, so 1 2 4 5 b is a set which contains 2 3 5 6 c is a set which contains 4 5 6 7 then we choose some particular sets a b c now we calculate the left hand side then we calculate the right hand side and then we see whether these two sides are equal or not so we calculate a minus b here a minus b is basically we subtracted 2 we subtracted 5 so we get 1 and 4 we calculated b and c b minus c so we subtract 5 and 6 we get 2 3 we calculated a minus c which is 1 2 so we take the union of these two a minus b and b minus c the union of this is 1 2 3 4 now a minus c is 1 2 
So whether these this set and this set are equal? No, these two sets are not equal. So in general, this identity is not true. So this is how we can find counterexample. This is another counterexample for the same identity. But it means that it is not necessary that there is only one example which dissatisfy the above equality. You can find many counterexamples to prove that this identity is not equal. But in some cases there may be a unique counterexample which dissatisfy the, the equality. But in normal cases there are several counterexamples uh, counter which dissatisfy the given uh, identity or equality. So if we take a is equal to 5, b is equal to 3, c is equal to 5, then a minus b is 5, b minus c is 3, uh, a minus c is 5. And hence the union of these two is basically 3 and a minus c is 5. So these two sets phi and this set are not equal therefore this equality is not true so now deriving a set difference property this is also another um, important property of in sets a this this states that if we have three sets a b and c then a union b minus c is a a minus c union b minus c so union comes in between here so we have to prove this uh, identity we use some set identities to to prove this so we take the left hand side a union b minus c so by using this identity which we have proved here which we have proved no the, the last identity which we have studied here this a minus b is equal to a intersection is equal to a intersection b complement so using set difference law here we can write a minus a, a union b minus c is equal to a union b intersection c complement by using set difference law and then by using commutative law we can say we can write C complement intersection A union B so now using the distributive laws this is C complement intersection A C complement intersection A and C complement intersection B and the union uh, union comes here now we can again use the commutative law here A comes here C complement comes here B comes here C complement comes here now again by using the set set difference law we can write a minus c union b minus c so this is what we have to prove so by taking left hand side and using set identities we have proved this set identity set difference property another property for the sets in which we have to prove that a minus a intersection b is equal to a minus b so this is uh, another important property for the, the this set identity we take the left hand side and we 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 use the same process to to prove this this property suppose a and b are in two sets then we take the left hand side here and this is basically equal to a intersection a intersection B whole complement by using set difference law. Now by using De Morgan's law we can use De Morgan's law here and this intersection will become union and we take the A complement and B complement. This here we have complement. So we obtain A intersection A complement union B complement. By using distributive law we can write A intersection a complement union A intersection B complement. So A intersection A complement. This is basically by a component uh, complement law. This is the empty set. And then here we have A intersection B complement. If we take the union of this set with empty, we get the same set. So 
here by using set difference law we can write a intersection b complement is equal to a minus b which is the right hand side which is uh, which was required here so again by using set identities we can prove we can prove these uh, this set identity now we compare these identities uh, with the identities of boolean algebra or logic uh, logical equivalence uh, we have studied some identities in logical equivalences so they have uh, um, a lot of resemblance um, between them here on the right hand side we have set properties here we have properties of logical equivalences here we have this law the commutative law for disjunction and conjunction here we have commutative law for union and intersection here we have distributive laws for conjunction and disjunction sorry associative laws here we have associative laws for conjunction and disjunction here we have same associative laws for union and intersection here we have distributive laws for the conjunction or and disjunction here we have the same distributive laws for sets here all all laws are for propositions here on the right hand side all laws are for the uh, for the sets here we have this law p or c is equal to p where c is the contradiction here in place of contradiction we have empty set and in place of proposition we have set so all these properties the the other properties are also uh, comparable these are properties for the propositions which we have studied in logic and these are the pr properties of uh, properties for the set actually these all properties have same meanings in logic and in sets but the context con context is different in the end, uh, uh, I would like to discuss a barber, barber puzzle with you. There is a town and in that town there is a male barber who shaves all those men, only those men who do not shave themselves. So I prefer to discuss this uh, puzzle in Urdu with you because uh, in Urdu we can explain or understand better ek kasbe mein ek nahi rehta tha jo ke ek male nahi tha theek hai wo sirf un logon ki shave karta tha jo khud shave nahi karte definitely sirf unhi logon ki shave kar sakta hai jo khud shave kar lenge wo to nahi ke paas nahi jayenge so nahi jo hai sirf un logon ki shave karta tha जो खुद शेव नहीं करते थे ओनली दोज मैन हु डू नॉट शेव दैम सेल्फ नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज क्या वो बार्बर जो है अपनी शेव खुद करता था सो नाउ वी हैव टू आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन सो नीदर येस नॉर नो वी के नॉट से येस एंड वी के नॉट से नो बिकॉज दिस पजल डजेंट हैव एनी सोल्यूशन so i'll i'll tell you also this me aapko solution bhi aakhir mein bataunga ki agar to nai apni shave nahi karta there are two classes do classes hain do groups hain us town mein ek wo log hain jo ke shave khud nahi karte aur ek wo log log hain jo shave khud karte hain agar to nai apni shave khud karta hai to it iska kya matlab hai ki wo उस बंदे की शेव कर रहा है जो शेव खुद करता है सो so, इस पे थोड़ा सा मतलब गौर करना है आप लोगों ने कि नाई सिर्फ उन लोगों की शेव करता है जो खुद शेव नहीं करते अब सवाल ये है कि नाई अपनी शेव खुद करता है या नहीं सो so, उस टाउन में दो किस्म के लोग रहते हैं एक तो वो जो अपनी शेव नहीं करते एक वो लोग हैं जो अपनी शेव करते हैं अगर नाई अपनी शेव खुद नहीं करता तो वो उस कैटेगरी में उस ग्रुप में आएगा जो कि अपनी शेव नहीं करते 
तो इसका मतलब है शायद नाई उस टाउन में कोई और नाई भी नहीं है सिर्फ एक ही नाई है तो फिर नाई अपनी शेव किससे करवाएगा जी यहाँ पे इसका मतलब है कि नाई अपनी शेव नहीं करता ये हम नहीं कह सकते अगर नाई अपनी शेव खुद करता है तो वो उस ग्रुप में लाई करेगा उस उन लोगों के ग्रुप में लाई करेगा कि जो लोग अपनी शेव खुद करते हैं इसका मतलब ये है कि नाई दूसरों की शेव नहीं कर सकता फिर क्योंकि नाई सिर्फ उन लोगों की शेव करता है जो अपनी शेव खुद नहीं करते सो देर इज नो आंसर टू दिस पजल बट वी कैन से दैट एक तो ये सोल्यूशन है इसका कि नाई ने दाढ़ी रखी हो इसका मतलब है कि नाई अपनी शेव खुद नहीं करता तो वो उन लोगों की शेव करता है जो कि अपनी शेव नहीं करते या तो फिर नाई मेल ना हो लड़की हो वो अपनी शेव नहीं करता तो दूसरों की कर सकता है लेकिन यहाँ पे यहाँ पे ये मेंशन है कि मेल बारबर है फीमेल बारबर नहीं है सो यू कैन रीड दिस स्टफ एंड यू विल बेटर अंडरस्टैंड दिस बारबर पजल विच इज़ ऑल्सो गिवन इन द बुक्स ऑफ डिस्क्रीट मैथमेटिक्स ऑफ सुसैना एंड रोजन यू कैन ऑल्सो कंसल्ट दीज बुक्स टू अंडरस्टैंड बेटर दिस पजल so for today it is enough i think and uh, what we have studied we summarize here first of all we have st- studied some properties of sets uh, set identities uh, which are commutative laws distributive laws and and there were uh, some other properties of sets we have studied the properties of empty sets and we have proved some difference properties of the sets by using set identities or you can say laws of laws of sets and then we have compared boolean algebra the properties of uh, logic the laws of logic with the laws of set theory because there is uh, um, almost you can say there is uh, much resemblance between the laws of set theory and laws of logic and at the end we have discussed a barber puzzle so Hmm. In the next lecture, we shall start, inshallah, the relations. Uh, for till that, Allah Hafiz.